another shop tour, Bombay Vapor, uh, by the busy ass freeway. It's fucking cold out. My Vaporium, go check them out. Still rocking their roller straps. I'm gonna get set up. We're gonna talk to these guys. Uh, it's a pretty badass little shop. All right, man, guys, girls, everybody. Hashtag no PG. I'm not sure what that means yet. I'll find out. Um, it's a little bit smaller than the last shop we were at, but that doesn't mean anything. Nice little lounge area right there. Cases, I'll walk down there, show you. Um, I don't know what else to say right now. Nice little sub tanks. <coughs> Mods, RDAs, chargers, all that good shit that you should expect to find. Oh yeah, big ass case. All right, now we're sitting down with Spence and Colin at Bombay. I'll put, where's the camera there? I'll put their Instagram accounts in the description. Um, Basically, guys, go ahead and introduce yourselves, what you're vaping on, um, what your preferred devices are. Um, I'm Colin. I'm 23. Single? Um, like, long wheat walks on the beach? <laughs> no, no, wrong video. No, <laughs> no, I am, I am a kept man. I am engaged. Um, I've been vaping for, what year is it? 2016? 2016. I've been vaping for six years now Jesus. uh yeah i know right <laughs> uh i'm vaping for six years i'm not your typical vapor i i enjoy nice mouth to lung inhales um my current setup is a vapor shark rdna 40 with the sub tank and i i can't vape anything better than that <laughs> yeah, my name's spencer uh I'm 23, actually recently engaged. Um, I've been vaping for two and a half years now. Uh, my preferred setup, I've been rocking the RX200 with the Velocity Mini. It's been awesome. Um, yeah, I pretty much only drip. I don't really like tanks. Yeah, me either. Yeah. <laughs> um, with the shop, I, what I've seen in the, what, hour, hour and a half, or so I've been here forever um, you guys are very cu customer centric mm -hmm. um, very much so what what's your biggest um, I don't know how to say it obviously working in a vape shop being vapors is a huge advantage mm -hmm. but what's your f favorite thing with a customer you know getting a, a new uh, a vapor, you know, getting somebody off of smoking mm -hmm. onto vaping, mm -hmm. you know, something like that, you know what I mean? Uh, uh. That, that's, the, that's the main goal, of course, is, you know, every, every once in a while, I mean, for our, mo most of our customer base is already Va vapors, vaping. they're already vapors, uh, because we do try to offer more of your, your sub ohm type of stuff, which is honestly becoming the new starter kit, mm -hmm. yeah. but, uh, Definitely my favorite thing with the customers is just getting a customer walking out the door vaping with a smile on their face, mm -hmm. you know, and them thinking to themselves, hey, I'm going to come back and I know I'm going to get the same experience again. Mm -hmm. We try to we try to offer our customers the same experience every time they come. Right. Yeah, and that's why we're so customer service centric is because I, I know a, when I started vaping, I was really nervous to go into the vape shop because I didn't know what I was talking about. And, right. You know, and still, even though I know what I'm talking about, I still don't like to go to other shops because a lot of people, not every shop, can be kind of elitist and everything like that. So we try to, you know, be just like as friendly as possible just to keep right. people coming back. Yeah. And we if don't want a bad rep or anything like that from mm -hmm. anyone, even if it's like someone that we've never met, probably won't matter if we're a dick to them, but we're not going to be. <laughs> right. It, it, it's funny you mentioned, you know, you were nervous to go into your first vape shop. Dude, I can't even, I was 
dumbfounded when I went to my first vape shop. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're hearing words that, I mean, now they're, we use them every day, mm -hmm. and, and it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for a new person to come in, or even someone that's, you know, still on an ego, uh, to come in and, and you're talking sub-tank, sub-ohm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, RDA, coil, fuse, mm -hmm. clapped in, yeah. alien, hoof, foot, coils i mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly uh i mean and with, with customers that still come in with egos we have plenty of those um they like we i feel like you have to know about an ego you have to have had to experience at least an ego style battery with something like a you know one of these guys you know a little evod, evod. Right, yeah. you know you got to have that kind of experience to really relate you got to be able to relate to all these different types of customers Right. Um, not just so much, you know, the rebuilding and the sub ohm tanks and mm -hmm. all or that dickheads stuff. like me that have three setups <laughs> sitting on the on the counter with different things on them. Right. Yeah. Now you said you've been vaping six years, so that's back in the days of the, the, the tea bags and the the blue foam and all that shit. Pretty much. I mean my my very first setup was a KR eight oh eight. Um and it, it was funny because I, I knew about atomizers and e-liquids and all this stuff before I even walked into my first vape shop. I wasn't that nervous walking into my first vape shop mm -hmm. like Spencer was because I, I, I knew what I was looking for. Right. And, and you know, one, one thing that sets us apart is even if a customer comes in and they don't know what they're looking for, we'll market all this stuff to them and, you know, see what fits their personality and what, mm -hmm. they, what they're looking for the best. Like when I walked into my first vape shop, they treated me like I had no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Even though yeah. I was like, I just need, you know, these pre filled yeah. cartridges. This is what I need. This is what I Sell need. Them to me. Sell them to me. And mm -hmm. they were like, No, you need an ego C with a one of those with refillable mouthpiece. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, not even a C E four. This mm -hmm. was like um what are those? C two days. The, oh, with the pre filled cartridges? Like not the not, pre filled mouthpiece. Oh, the, the ones you. Yeah, pieces. the refillable mouthpieces mm. that came with the Ego C. Or the Ego, mm. the Ego T, my bad. It was mm. the Ego T. Oh, one of those. Yeah, one of the bullshit tanks and the horrible, horrible atomizers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, those were horrible. That was what they tried to sell me, and I was like, I was already on a cartomizer, mm. essentially. With the KR808, right. it had the little cartomizers. Yeah, they came pre filled, and, you know, they tried to sell me on something I didn't need, and it was just, you know. Well, it's funny, too, to see, like, how the prices of, like, egos and stuff drop. Because when I started, the new thing to get was, like, like the little tiny 350 milliamp hour ego battery right. and a, a CE4 clearizer with the long tail waves. Yeah. And even that, for two batteries, one tank and a case and a charger, was, like, 80 bucks. I think I spent 40 yeah. on a 650 uh, ego and a CE4. And I was like, yeah, this is awesome. And right. now you're like, the fuck is Well, it's funny because yeah. when I started, like, I had one of those and then I jumped up to a Anakin VV, the little square batteries. Yeah. And an EVOD 2. And right after that, I got a Chi Yu and a Russian. And that's all I vaped for a long time. <laughs> I didn't even drip for, like, in once I got into rebuilding, I don't think I had a dripper for, like, six months. And then I got one from a buddy. I remember, but, yeah. you, I remember you had an Ithaca before you had a... I, did, I never owned an Ithaca. Tra Chaz tried to sell me an Ithaca. But then you realized it's an Ithaca? Yeah, he said, if you can take it apart, I'll give it to you for free. And, yeah, I, I couldn't, so I was like, I'll just buy a Fogger. <laughs> nice. I think my first REA was the was a Tobe. It was. Mm -hmm. A Tobe Addy. Um, and then I had, like, four of them. Mm -hmm. Um... I had more questions, but I don't know. See, what I, I, I I didn't get into rebuilding until, I mean, not rebuilding. I didn't get into like RDAs until a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and I got a because I remember I used to come in here all the time before I was employed here, and Spencer he had a Manhattan with a plume veil on it. Oh wow! And um, that was when the I would like first came out. Yeah, and I would literally just steal his Manhattan because I didn't have an RDA <laughs> and the whole time I was here I would just vape his vape mm. his mod that was when he had a pro variant of Russian that was when I had a pro variant of Russian that was 
That was the shit. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, it's funny. I was going to bring up the Ferraris, Ferraris, whatever. Now, <clears throat> my first mod was the uh, Z-Max, the mm -hmm. smoked Z-Max. Yeah, so that basically was, a Pravari. But, yeah, you know, a, che much. a cheaper version of the Pravari, mm -hmm. yeah. But the Pravaris were only um, variable volt. The Z-Max was watt and volt. Mm -hmm. And that was still 100 bucks, and that mm -hmm. was like the, the, the pinnacle. And, it, you know, dropping 100 bucks then was like, oh, my God, how much mm -hmm. did I, you know. Now... Oh, bucks. oh no, my my KR808. When I first got it, I it was the KR808 came with two batteries, a charger, and about five pre-filled cartridges. I dropped eighty-five bucks on it. Right, and, and that was in two thousand ten. And seeing the progression, I mean, now for a hundred bucks, you can get a decent setup. Right. And, uh, yeah, you can get you can get you know um, you can get a sub box kit for a hundred bucks mm -hmm. here right. at least. Right. No, I mean online prices are always of course soon. yeah but I mean for a brick and mortar 100 bucks you know that, mm -hmm. that's the average price for a, yeah. a, a, a the setup like mm -hmm. I've got the the Cooper plus I think retails what 80 bucks on one of those mm -hmm. I, I mean, yeah retail retails in a shop for about 80 bucks but I've seen them online for, online like, for like 55 55 yeah. right I mean I was lucky enough to get mine sent to me mm -hmm. um but I mean even at that the progression of vaping is, is yeah it's just crazy how fast it moved because like you know we've only been open for close to two years but i remember when i started we still sold uh like the z max or vamos and everything right. like that and we had those for like three months and then they kind of just fell out making they, yeah just they fell off disappeared out of nowhere mm -hmm. and then how quickly tube mods kind of fell off too because there was a long time where we had no regulated mods at all. It yep. was just all tube mods. Right. Tube mech mods. That's all mm -hmm. we had for a good while. And it was, you know, that was great. And then all of a sudden, I don't even know where it started with, like, mm -hmm. the iStick 30 watt. Right. Yeah, that was like the <laughs> first, like, regulated mod we got in. Well, the Hannah clones, but. Yeah. Then you, you got the, you know, it, it, what I've seen is it goes from regulated to max. To back to regulated, mm -hmm. and then it goes to you know parallel or, mm -hmm. or series box mods, yeah. unregulated, or you know with potentiometers. Now we're up to DNA two hundreds. I believe there's a mm -hmm. two twenty device out there. Mm -hmm. um, unless you're an elitist and you have a, a vicious ant that's a three fifty, <laughs> right? <laughs> which I only know one dickhead that has one of those. <laughs> I mean, and, that, uh, the very ant. Uh, <laughs> I've never even seen him use it. Uh, you know who you are, Paul. Um, yeah, I know. I know a guy that has one. He won it in a raffle. I don't know anybody. Uh, I don't know. I don't know many people that consciously bought a vicious ant just because they're so expensive. Right. Um, like, and now it's and now it's all getting into because I remember back. You know, your high end mech mods were like. You know, you had your high end mods were mech mods. You yeah. know, you had a nice shiny tube. You know, you had your Nemesis or your King or, or your you know Caravella. your Caravella, your <laughs> Chaiyu. Now it's getting all into stabilized wood mm -hmm. and you know right. all these high-end c-frame mods that you know i liked i liked it back in the day when you could buy a you considered getting a high-end mod was two hundred dollars i remember when i bought my chi use and because I, I bought the uh, an authentic one and it was 250 i think and i was like i'm set this is the only mod i've ever that in the russian <laughs> yeah. i was like this is all i ever need <laughs> right and, and even at that i mean clones then were extremely popular mm. anymore <sighs> clones were extremely popular but clones were extremely crappy they were really bad because it used to be china was just the worst producer of mech mods mm -hmm. right and now they're you know we've got you've got companies like a mod with tofo and Wizmag. you know Wizmag that are coming out with joy tech you know mechanical mods right and, i mean even like the the heavy hitters with uh, clones like H Cigar, they're coming out with their own, yeah, their, their own, own, you know, yeah. authentic DNA two hundred chip devices. devices. Yeah, and that and um, that and that's props to Evolve too, being you know, because they used to be, Evolve used to be pretty elitist, and they would only sell their DNA forty chips to American made companies, mm -hmm. right? And now they're selling them to everywhere, and that's mm -hmm. you know. And I mean, who was the other one? Tobacco was a big uh, mm -hmm. a clone mm -hmm. company. Yeah. Um, so this is how far removed I am. Are they still doing? Clones or are they making their own devices now? I Tobacco, they, I have not heard anything from them in a while. I haven't heard anything from Tobacco. Either have I. I mean, they're they're pretty yeah. much you yeah. know, falling off. And like mm -hmm. you said, with Tofo, they're well, Tofo is killing the game. Mm -hmm. Like they, they, they really are. They've come up with their own devices and they're pretty kick-ass mm -hmm. devices. Yeah. Um, 
Because, you know, Watofo, Watofo is their authentic side and AMODs their clone side. We used mm-hmm. to, you know, all, all the mech mod, all the clone mech mods we used to carry were AMOD. Mm-hmm. Like right. the AMOD simple, we had to have sold like 2,000 of those. Same mm-hmm. thing with the Manhattans. The Manhattans we sold a bunch of. Mm-hmm. Right. And weren't they the Foo Hattans? Um, no, the Foo Hatton, we didn't, we, I don't think we ever had the Foo Hatton. The Foo Hatton was the, the original machinist for Amerivabe. Took right. the design for the Manhattan, sent it off to China, and had Fu Hattons made. Right. And, That's... but no, he yeah, had we he just has carried straight Amod Manhattans. Yeah. All right. See, I knew I was. So they still had the, the you know the Amerivape logo on them. Right. And all that stuff. Um, now I showed a little bit uh, earlier, but you guys have a few juice lines. Um, mm-hmm. Just a few. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Quite a bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> we actually we actually have uh, right around eighteen premium juice lines, mm-hmm. and I mean that's. Mm-hmm. I, although there are eighteen premium juice lines, mm-hmm. I still wouldn't consider. Well, I mean it's a you're a higher end shop, but not an overpriced shop. No, by um, by no by no means. Like most most shops, I mean, like like we discussed earlier, like most shops like to have you know 100 percent markup on all their stuff so they can mm-hmm. rake yeah, in that bankroll, mm-hmm. you know. But like tying in with the customer centric stuff, you know, we we don't do 100 percent markup. Mm-hmm. We would rather have a customer come in here and get a nice device that's affordable to them. Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, like I said, they can leave with a smile on their face, you know, being like, dang, I did not spend too much money to quit smoking. Right. Right. I mean, no matter how you slice it, profit's not a bad word. Yeah. By no means. Not a bad Um, word at all. With, I mean, being a brick and mortar, it's got to be a little difficult with all the online vendors, right? Mm, Yeah. But the one thing you guys offer that online doesn't offer is a customer service it has a face to talk to mm-hmm. yeah. there's a there's somebody you have to a talk face to. to talk to you can look at the look at the device and you know spencer and i will give you the complete rundown on any device that we carry so you know exactly what you're getting before you even get it well and honestly like with all the with and all with all the like hardware mods uh any addy that we sell we one of us probably owns it right so we can probably or has owned it at or one has point. owned it in one at one point so we can give you like a direct like review of it like what we think of it same as all the juice like i've probably vaped every single bottle like at least one of every type of juice that we sell just a few juices as well as down there just a few um now we were talking a little bit my tripod broke guys so it's all jacked up now awesome you get to be (laughs) seasick maybe not um about watching reviewers and everything uh Mm. I know you don't. You guys don't watch my channel. You probably didn't even know I had a channel. I did not so, until today. You know, yes, that's that's awesome. It's much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are some things you guys would like to see coming out of reviewers? Uh, I mean, there are reviewers that do more juices. There are reviewers that do you know a little bit of everything. Yeah. But as far as mods, do you want to see more lower end, lower cost mods or higher end mods being reviewed? I mean, it it all go it all comes to the point to where like you have. You have reviewers out there like um, like Damien from mm-hmm. A Bloody Good Vaping. He does all the high end C frames, right. stab wood mods, and then you have other reviewers like you, Vape and Fagan, uh, Grim Green. They do more affordable stuff. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say Grim does affordable. He does he, pretty end high end. He, he, he does mm-hmm. some high end stuff, but then he has his moments where he does a good right, right. You know, a good deal. Pause it one, one minute. Hey guys. Um. Thanks for joining me on the uh, Bombay Vapor uh, shop uh, walk around uh, tour uh, review. That was uh, what was episode two. Um, episode three is yet to come. I, I know the shop I'm going to go to. Um, I had to kind of dip out of there quick. I had a um, family emergency pop up, so I didn't get to um, sit down with Chaz, the uh, the owner of Bombay. He was in another shop all day. He's got a couple of guys, a few guys that actually work for him. Um, notable mention with Chaz is he's young. He's 
22, I think. About to be 22. He's young. But, um, so, uh, mad props to him and his two guys working there. 23, I mean, that's, they're young guys. It's nice to see, uh, young people getting in and vaping. Um, what we talked about off camera was their shop is a little bit more geared towards, uh, younger vapors, which is, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm old, I guess I'm 35, but, uh, it was a good time. I enjoyed hanging out up there. Uh, guys are super personable if you're in the um dfw area um more specifically denton what i'll do is i'll um i'll put a link to their facebook page uh in the description as always um go check them out uh it's a great shop i mean you know it's uh it's fun to go and hang out and chill thanks for watching everybody with that may the vape be with you